All right. How about a gong? <laughs> yeah, Hickok 45 here with a plastic gun. Uh, who'd have thunk it? Back in the 60s or 50s, they'd make plastic firearms. Well, that's what we got. Nylon 66. Yeah, you've only been requesting this for about 12 years. Finally got my hands on one. And uh, let you know what I think. We'll just take a look at it. It's a classic. They're kind of a classic rifle. They really are. So, uh, bought this one, Tom. Uh, yeah, I have wanted to shoot one of these. Uh, I think I fired a buddy's back in the 70s before it got stolen from him. Yeah, don't tell him I got it. Now his uh, was magazine fed. Uh, they made these in different configurations. Uh, some of them took, I think, a 10 round magazine. And this one loads from the, uh, the butt, from the rear. And uh, they made them in different colors, then uh, you know, different names. So there were several different configurations and they started making them in about 59, 1959, and I think up through 89. So haven't made them for a while, but there are people who just love them. I, I know in Tulsa, there's always at least one person has a table full of them in racks where they are collectors of these Nylon 66s. That's kind of the name of them. It's actually the name, Nylon 66. <laughs> you imagine someone making a polymer pistol these days and calling it the, the Polymer 65 or something. But it was a new thing at the time. It was kind of pretty unconventional. There were some others. But uh, this one, I think, was considered the first really mass-produced, uh, the highly successful, dare we say, you know, plastic stock rifle, you know, the Nylon 66. And 66, unlike with a lot of firearms, really doesn't have anything to do with the year. You know, usually like a Winchester 66, hey, came about in 1866. But this is one of those cases. I think Nylon 66 actually was the a designation uh, at DuPont maybe for the uh, the type of polymer or plastic, okay? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, although I'm never wrong, right? And uh, it, it was also called Zytel something, 101 or whatever, but uh, it was a kind of a nylon, uh, I don't know, anyways, to call it Nylon 66, okay? And DuPont and Remington worked together and DuPont figured out this stuff and how to make a stock that would be strong, uh, lightweight, uh, durable, you know, for a, a rifle and of course make it less expensive to build, you know, in get away from wood. And this thing has a lot of plastic in it. I might even take off the receiver cover and, and show you that. But first let me load it up again. I'll show you how it loads. Uh, and this is not totally unique. There's some Brownings that load this way. Uh, so, hey, how about the uh, Spencer? It loaded like this, didn't it? Now it holds 14 rounds. And that's the only thing, Oop. and it doesn't want to hold, let me make sure okay, before I do that, of course I know it's empty, but double check and put it on safe. Okay, you got, it's a little bit like a bull pup, you know, when you load from the behind like this. But it does just hold 14. So unlike, uh, I don't know, like a tube fed uh, rifle from the front where you, 22s, where you can just keep putting the bullets in, you don't have to count or anything, and you can tell by looking at it when you're full. This one, you really can't tell as well. And uh, so you need to sort of count, you know, 14 rounds in there, which is tough. With 10 fingers, I've got to count to 14. Not an easy task. All right, see, it'll hold. I don't know if you can see in there, it'll hold like about 18. I put 18 in there and it just wouldn't take them. So anyway, this was an unconventional, it was very unconventional at the time. We don't think much about a plastic or a polymer firearm these days, do we? But this was uh, pretty uh, pretty different, and but it was well received. It was well received. But they did a lot of testing with it. And they had pro shooters that worked for Remington to do something. I forget the names of these people, but they you know for a series of days they shot like thousands of rounds and and uh, it was very public or articles about it I guess and just to prove it was reliable because you can imagine a lot of people would be very resistant in the late 1950s uh, to something that looks like this. But uh, they overcame that, and they sold a bunch of them. All right, you see them. A lot of you have seen these at gun shows and around. It's got that Mossberg type ambidextrous safety, doesn't it? Really does, doesn't it? So let me take a couple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some clay pigeons real quick, because this is the way I like to shoot clay pigeons. Oh, we had a malfunction. That's my first, I'll have to say. Did we get a new round there? Now we got a double feed, so I may have to work on that. I'll take this out. 
take the pressure off of it and then look at it there we go dump it out and start over all right so i dump out the ammo i'll put a little more back in before i too get too far afield uh let me remind you of someone else who helps us over here look at that pretty precious metal uh atmex.com check out their site and uh, i think you'll you'll be impressed with what you see because they make just wonderful uh a uh, wonderful selection. They don't make it necessarily. Well, they do make some of it, but they have uh, numismatic coins, bullion coins, and some they actually do make. You know, like that 10-ounce uh, silver thing is Atmex. You know, they make some of that. You know what I did, I think? I, uh, I have had uh, a little difficulty today. We did... Uh, how did I do that? You know what I've got? I, must have, I think I grabbed one of these because it one came out. Look at that. Look at the difference. Yeah, I forgot to do this and we did a 22 Magnum video recently and I meant to show the difference There's a 22 long rifle and a 22 Magnum round. Okay, so what I think I did I may not have but I think what I did Having that open I brought out the wrong box and I've got a, I've had a box uh, of both available 20 and I can't read it says 22 Winchester Magnum right on it, but you know, I've always had trouble reading. Okay, so I think we have plenty of ammo though So let me make sure I got all the the wrong size ammo out of there yeah there's a 22 magnum they're not designed for that they're designed for 22 long rifle so there's three four eight ten twelve fourteen okay that's what it holds and it does fine with 14. what i might have done was grabbed uh, like one of the magnums or something and i didn't realize it i look at the video and can tell or some of you might have seen it. If I did that, you might have seen me do that. If you happen to notice, probably didn't catch it. Or it might just been a malfunction. This firearm was designed to use the less uh, lubricant because you have the bolt running partly just against nylon, against the stock. I'm just going to put that in there and make sure we're not overloaded there. And... Uh, you know, I, I may take that off real quick and give you a quick look at that. It's, it, it is definitely a plastic uh, firearm and receiver. So, safety off. Now, let's shoot some, uh, try to get around in the chamber. Boom, boom, some pigeons. Ye doggies. <laughs> Nothing like shooting stationary clay pigeons. How about a 12 ounce? Oh, there's one lying there. Oh, no, I'm out of ammo. Yeah. Okay, I hope that's what that was because I don't think I've uh, experienced malfunctions really with this. I haven't shot it a lot though. I got it a few months ago. The Tennessee, actually, the Tennessee Firearms Association annual uh, uh, banquet or picnic. Uh, there were some dealers there. It was great and I, I picked it up. Because a friend of mine, like I say, had one, and I fired it uh, years and years ago. He had stolen, and uh, he's always talking about that and reminiscing, missing his firearm. <laughs> Every time we run into one at a gun show, two, four, six, eight, ten, oh, 12, 14. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, I really don't know anybody else that has one. Uh, but, I mean, you know, a lot of people have them. I'm not privy to everybody's gun collection. That, that is one thing about having your own range since uh, like 82 or something. Uh, I don't go to gun ranges, firearms ranges, or shooting ranges very often and see other people and the firearms they bring and you know, just don't have that, that same experience that a lot of you all have going to ranges. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you trade with me, right? I'm not complaining, but it, is, it does make a little difference. It's like when I uh, need a range bag or to load up stuff to take. I'm not used to it. Whereas you probably have a couple of range bags, everything organized, you're ready to go. But I really uh, you know, do that. So, All right. Nylon 66. If you're not familiar with it, uh, yeah, been around 59 to about 89. Like I say, made them in different colors and configurations. Uh, some had scope mounts and I guess this one does. Clamps on. And... Uh, different names for some of them you know like a mohawk brown and a seneca green i think and 
you'll see them at gun shows mainly. Uh, oh, there's a two liter sitting way over there on that barrel. I think the sights are pretty much on. Yeah, what'd I tell you? Let's try a red plate up there in the middle. I think I got it. Let's try one on the right. It makes more noise. Yeah. <laughs> How about some of these right here? Yeah, I'll just take them all out and then do a little bowling at the same time. Boom. 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 And let's shoot that taper. Nylon 66, it says. I'll be darned. Quick, let's dump. We'll load it one more time, then I'm going to make you go home, okay? So, yeah, like I say, it's been pretty reliable with the limited shooting I've done, so I think I might have put a wrong, wrong ammo in. Gosh, we did a video on that. Use the right ammo. Here I am using the wrong ammo. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 10, 12, 14. Gee, you didn't know I could count, period. Much less by twos, right? All right. Anything else about this thing? Hey, if you have one of these, because I am relatively inexperienced with them. I just know a little bit about them, obviously. And, uh, you know, tell us what your experience is with them. Uh, because I, I think generally they have a good, they had and still do good reputation for reliability. And, uh, you know, this is pre Freedom Group Remington, right, by the way. <laughs> and uh, just, uh, you know, not, not overly expensive. They're still not all that bad, even by it, because they're kind of collectible now. But uh, I think they had a pretty good reputation. And uh, so. I'm going to shoot these out. Uh-oh, almost forgot that. I got a bunch of tin cans, as you can tell, for good reason. Boom. Because we're shooting a 22, and here they are. Smoke the pot. Boom. Put holes in all of them, but they didn't knock them off. Here's a couple more down there. Sometimes it knocks them off, sometimes it doesn't. Boom. <laughs> I won't knock the arms around. I wonder why not. <laughs> it's only a 22. Gosh. Okay, let me show you real quick and I'll let you go. Uh, it's definitely clear. A, this is kind of an interesting animal. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do it right here. Yeah, I think all you do is let's see. Yeah, so it's clear. can't remember if the bolt has to be back or not. Take these two screws out, and this cover comes off. It kind of has the uh, appearance of being uh, a metal receiver, and that was like the what they wanted. Again, this is pretty different, you know, for the 50s. Plastic guns? I don't know. That's long before Glock and some of the others. So this is actually what you're looking at, more of a cover than anything. As you'll see, let me get this off. There we go. This handle, well, the, even this handle, charging handle is. Let me put the safety on. But it's, you know, this this is piece of plastic. Look at that. <laughs> and uh, in this, look at that. Slips off. See, so look what you got. And this is the ejector that just pulls out. This lifts up. I won't do it, but that lifts up. You take that screw out, and the barrel comes out. Okay. I had it out earlier, and then this slips back on. But see, the bolt's actually riding against some of that nylon, you know. Uh, consequently, they claim you really don't need uh, as much lube. So, I don't know, I tend to lube it up anyway. You can see the ballastol uh, dripping out of there. <laughs> I've got to put a little of that in, no matter what what they say, right? And you pop the handle back in. It, it does have a kind of a cheap feel. It has a cheap look and all that. But I think it had a, a pretty good reputation. I, you know, I was never drawn to one because I had my bolt action 22. I had a, a Revelation Model 60, basically. And so I wasn't looking for a 22 rifle necessarily back in the 70s or the 50s even and, and after. Uh, so, so I was a little turned off by them, I'll have to say. I, I never had a, a great desire for one. But uh, they have become collectible. They're, they're an interesting piece of firearms history. The Nylon 66. 
Uh, yeah, and there it is. This is one farm where I know we use the term polymer, plastic polymer. If you, don't, if you hate polymer stuff, you tend to call it plastic, don't you? You know, connotations are different from the word plastic versus polymer. Because some polymer is tougher than steel, you know. Well, this one, that's more plastic, you know. It is, you know I mean, that just seems to be plastic, you know. So that was uh, doubly uh, offensive to some extent for a lot of folks. But anyway, the old Nylon 66, uh, it shoots well. The sights are, are right on. And, uh, you know, I guess a person could do worse. I didn't end up shooting the paper target, did I? I didn't get one on it, but uh, that's okay. We'll catch it later. So uh, John's ready to shoot it some, and uh, we may put a few more thousand rounds to it, but we're going to let you all go now, okay? And we just appreciate your support. Glad you, uh, you came out this evening. It's a pretty nice evening for winter. You know, it's uh, not very cold, and that makes it a good time to shoot, as if there's not a good time to shoot, right? So, see you all later. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the Internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.